Hey friends, you've heard me talk about HelloFresh before, and I'm here to remind you of America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh offers farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Now, I know a lot of you have told me that you are trying to sit down to dinner together as a family more this year, but what do you do about nights when your schedule is packed? Well, turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. I know that this time of year, everyone's looking to revamp their eating habits, so look to HelloFresh's wholesome health-forward options as well, like over 30 calorie-smart and protein-smart recipes each week. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash Monica free and use code Monica free for free breakfast for life. What? That's right. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com forward slash Monica free and use code Monica free. Yay for HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Christian Parenting. Aloha, friends. Welcome to the Monica Swanson Podcast, powered by Christian Parenting. I am Monica Swanson, mom to four boys, wife to Dr. Dave, podcast host and author of Boy Mom, and soon to be released Raising Amazing. Here on the podcast, it is my goal to bring you practical advice and biblical wisdom for raising amazing kids and building strong families. You can always find show notes over at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. I'm so glad you're here, and I hope you'll be encouraged. If we really want to give our kids um, the ability to experience real life adventure, real life connection, real intimacy, real joy, we have to help them say no to pornography, say no to video game addiction, say no to alcohol and drugs. But we can't just say, don't do those things. Those are bad. We have to provide a place. We have to put in time and effort to show them what the alternatives are. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so happy to get to hang out with you today and happy March. It's a new month and wow, what a doozy February was. We had such a packed month here. If you've missed any episodes, I hope you can go back and check them out. As last week, we got to celebrate the release of my book, Raising Amazing. Thank you so much for all the support, for all the fun leading up to the launch and I hope you've got your copy by now and if you haven't, definitely go over to the book page, check it out, Monica Swanson com forward slash raising amazing. Now you heard a short clip at the beginning from my new friend, Greta Eskridge, who I'm so excited to share with you today. I just adore Greta. I already adored her from a distance, but it was so fun getting to know her. And as it's March, what a perfect time to start thinking ahead to spring and summertime. And we're going to be talking about adventure, about the importance of kids and adventuring and what that looks like. Because I think sometimes, and we'll talk about this in the interview, but we kind of of build up this idea of adventure to be something really big and complicated and a little bit overwhelming when it doesn't have to be. So Greta and I will talk about that and I think you'll be encouraged and probably even a little bit relieved by what we consider adventure. So Greta adds so much to this conversation, and I couldn't resist at the beginning asking her to share with us a bit about her homeschool journey, because she's very involved in the homeschool community, but she herself was also homeschooled growing up, and I loved hearing about her experience being a homeschooler and now homeschooling her own kids. So bear with us as we have that conversation. I know a lot of you are curious about homeschooling and have asked me a lot of questions, so hopefully you're going to enjoy getting to know that part of Greta as well. So I don't want to waste any more time, but I want to dive right into this conversation with Greta Eskridge as we talk about adventuring with kids, why it's so important, and how we can dive in and offer our kids what they need the very most. I hope you enjoy. Hey, Greta, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, you and I have been trying to make this happen for so long. It just feels like, finally, here we are. It's There's- so good. I, I'm just thrilled. 
talk to you. I've been following you and just so encouraged by everything that you share and your own personal story and what I know of you. So this is like, I finally get to talk to you face to face here and um, face to face across the miles through a through a computer. But before we dive in, can you give people a little introduction to who you are and what you're all about? Sure. Uh, so I am a mom of four and my kids range in age from 11 to 18. Mm -hmm. I have three sons and one daughter and I have been married to my husband, Aaron. This summer, we're going to celebrate our 25th anniversary. We got married when we were just barely out of our teens wow. and, um, we grew up together and, um, yeah, we've homeschooled our kids from the beginning and graduated our first homeschooled kid mm -hmm. this past June. And I love homeschooling. I was homeschooled myself and knew when I was just like 13, when I had kids someday, I would homeschool them. In between, I was a high school English teacher for five years, which I also loved. And, um, in the last few years, I have published two books. So now I've also gotten to fulfill a lifelong dream of being mm. um, a writer Yay. and a speaker. And um, yeah, I'm just passionate about life and books and kids and mm. joyful adventuring and um, just preserving childhood yes. is um yeah, just all those things bring me a lot of joy. So there you yeah. go. Oh, I wish we could hang out in real life. I, I can tell. I, I hope we do get to sometime. Sometime. That I, I think that would be great. Speaking of which, tell people where you are and that stuff too. Okay. Yes. I live in Southern California. I'm a Southern California native, been here my whole life. And we live in the LA area and um, near the beach. We love tide pooling and hiking and mm -hmm. spending much time outdoors as we can. Yes. And so it actually is possible that we could hang out because yeah, I go Not to that, that area. No, we're just, just a airplane hop over exactly. the ocean, but we do, we do come to Southern California quite a bit. And, and I imagine one thing my boys and I talk about is from where you live, you can get to just about anywhere. You can get to the desert, the mountains, the ocean, you can find cold yeah. weather, warm weather. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It is fun. I mean, that's a great thing. Our, I am part of um, our homeschool group. We call ourselves Adventure Club, mm -hmm. and we go on an adventure together every single week, a field trip. And we'll do hikes in the desert one week at Joshua Tree National Park, mm -hmm. and then we can go to the mountains the very next mm -hmm. week or go to the high schools. Like it's, we're very fortunate. It is a yeah. fun place, mm -hmm. especially if you are into outdoors and nature. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's there's just so much variety. Yes. All close enough for a drive. Right. And where I live, you can drive around our island in a couple hours <laughs> and it just keeps circling. And there's a lot of, a lot of the same all year long, but there's still plenty of adventure. And we've been part oh, of that. Yeah. yeah. We've had our little local wild and free, um, kind of adventure groups that we've joined as well for some fun stuff. So yeah, it's, it's all good stuff. Well, before we jump in and talk more adventure, cause that's really what I can't wait to talk to you about. Tell us a little bit more. I love that you were homeschooled because I was not, and I never imagined being a homeschool mom until I had my own kids and they were in school and we were facing like what to do next. And that's when we decided to give it a try. But I will tell you that my four sons have all thus far said they plan to homeschool after they've now mm -hmm. three graduated from homeschooling. And um, yeah, they're like, yeah, we're going to homeschool. So that that's encouraging. Uh, tell, tell me when I introduced them to my daughter. Oh, for um, sure. Yeah. To marry. hundred percent. No, we're, we believe in arranged marriages around here. So Oh, good. This yeah. is getting better at the moment. Uh, yeah. One of my sons has actually said, I have a feeling I'm probably going to marry someone that I meet through like you and your people because he he's like, mom, I trust you. I think you know me well enough. You'd probably pick a better wife than I would. Oh, he's a great kid. I he love is. him. I didn't even know him. He's great. <laughs> I loved being homeschooled. I absolutely loved it. My parents homeschooled my younger brother and I in the 80s when very few wow. people were homeschooling. It was like kind of the era of it's not illegal, but is it really legal? Exactly. We just are gonna fly under the radar. Yeah. Um, Were you in LA? 
we we were closer to San Diego, so just okay. like in, you know, um, still in Southern California, uh-huh. and there were very we lived in a small town. There were just a handful of homeschool families when we started, mm-hmm. um, but it, and it wasn't the norm. I mean, everybody yeah. would say things like, "Well." What about prom? And oh, yeah. what about talking to other people? But they, they still do say those things, right? <laughs> right now. Like, well, know. and so what what caused your parents to choose homeschooling? Well, I have um so my older brother and sister went through the traditional school system in our town okay. and my parents just found that the experience was not ideal, mm-hmm. not just educationally, but also, you know, in on a spiritual level, mm-hmm. on an emotional level. And um, they had us at the beginning in a private Christian school. But very soon after my dad's business went through some real financial hardships mm-hmm. and they couldn't afford it. Yeah. And so they were like, well, what are our options? And my mom heard... Um, about homeschooling on Focus on the Family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she was listening to the radio because those oh, were the days. Yeah. Know. She thought it was crazy, but she told my dad, which <laughs> was her mistake because my dad was like, well, this is great. This is the answer to our prayers. This oh, is what goodness. we're doing. Seriously. My mom was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this. Are you kidding? Right? And my dad's an optimist and a believer that God can do amazing mm. things when mm-hmm. we obey him. And so he's like, yes, you can, you can do wow. it. And I'll help you. And, you know, if you just teach the kids to love to read and to be critical mm-hmm. thinkers yep. and, you know, real life skills, they'll be fine. Smart. And man. so I was in fourth grade. They pulled me out of school and my brother was in second and we never went back. And wow. the first year was hard. I mean, yeah. it was, it was a huge mm-hmm. transition. Sure. But then um, we loved it. And I mean, I was like, I can read and babysit and get a job at the library. Like uh, what more is there in right? life? Yes. Mama. And my brother built a BMX track across the street sure. in our That's... field because he would finish his schoolwork and go out there and build his bike uh, jumps. And he was happy and so we thrived. Cool. We loved it. Oh, that is so much fun. Um, you know, my mom would always say it's not the quantity of friends, it's the quality. Oh yeah. And so I like it. Um, that was really true for us. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the people that we grew up with that were homeschooling are homeschooling their kids now. Mm. We're still friends. Wow. I love it. And I can the kids that I babysit now, they have kids uh-huh. and they're homeschooling their uh-huh. kids. <laughs> so I'm like crazy. homeschool grandma. Totally. <laughs> um, Oh, that is, it's really, cool. yeah, it's, yeah, it's a legacy. And I'm really excited to see that kids that homeschooled when I was homeschooled, that now we're homeschooling our kids mm-hmm. because it wasn't damaging. It was actually right. really wonderful. Well, that's so much fun. And as we transition here into this topic of adventure, I'm curious, were your parents adventurers? Did they take you on adventures? where did you get your love of adventure? Well, I definitely got my love of adventure from my dad, um, but they didn't, they didn't get to take us on lots of extravagant Mm -hmm. or elaborate adventures Mm -hmm. because um, we were a single income family Mm -hmm. and my dad worked a lot to be able to allow my mom to stay home with us. And my mom had a lot of physical limitations, Mm -hmm. which made like outdoor physical adventures difficult for Mm -hmm. her. So what she did, though, was she gave us a love of, of adventuring through books. Yes. And so, um, I mean, I feel like we traveled the world mm. with my mom mm. reading books. And that was a gift that is, um, I mean, I get emotional thinking yeah. about it mm-hmm. because it was such a powerful, lasting gift mm-hmm. that she gave to us. Yeah. And it's one that I can pass on to my own kids. Um, and then my dad, you know, when he had time and the ability, um, he took us on adventures. Sometimes they were as simple as let's go find a back road that we've never been on and mm-hmm. let's go bike ride yeah. or let's go to the beach, um, mm-hmm. every Sunday afternoon that, that I'm home. Mm-hmm. Um, and just really making like whatever we did an, an adventure. adventure. Okay. And it wasn't about, um, the actual adventure itself. Mm -hmm. It was really about creating connection. And that's what I always 
tell parents when they say to me, they're like, well, we live in a place where there's, Mm -hmm. you know, we're in Kansas and there's no mountains, cool things. There's no tide pools here. And my kids will be bored. And I always say it's the connection is the destination. The adventure is the vehicle you use to get there. Mm -hmm. But the connection, that's what you're aiming for. Mm -hmm. And so for your kids, just being with you, um, that's what they care about. Mm-hmm. And you can make anything. Like I literally remember going on a trip to the dump with my dad sure. to drop off trash yeah. uh-huh. and an adventure because oh, it wasn't oh. about the adventure itself. It was the, the connection that happened along the way. Oh, yes. And so that's my purpose of adventuring with my kids is to create connections that will last a lifetime because that's what my parents did with me. Okay. I couldn't love all of this anymore. This is so good. And I think my boys would completely agree. And sometimes I worry because we'll talk about or post pictures on social media of my boys surfing big waves or going cave diving. And yeah, they do some crazy adventures, but they also would agree that they have great memories of building blanket forts in the living room. They also loved uh, when I would read aloud to them and we would go on adventures through books. And so I think my boys would totally agree with everything you're saying. And I also think it's worth mentioning here that I have tried to take my boys on quote adventures, you know, the things that feel like I should be doing and maybe on a hike, let's just say where I'm not present, where I'm distracted, where I'm looking at my phone or I have other things on my mind. And so it's not really even fulfilling the purpose of being together, but I've also had moments at home where we're just in the living room together talking and laughing and cuddling or whatever age or stage they're in where we are fully connecting. And so I do think that adventure is such um, a a perspective, the way we look at what we do and what we make of that time that we have together. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we, we have to start where we are. And Mm. so when my, when we started, I made a commitment to adventure with them every week. And, um, when we started, I mean, they were all little, like going for a walk around the nature center was a big adventure yep. because getting four kids, you know, <laughs> seven and under yeah. in a car totally. to drive, you know, 15 minutes, packing snags, nursing on a trail yeah. at the nature center. It was a big adventure, uh-huh. um, but as they grew and as they've grown, they, um, they can do more. Mm -hmm. They can do those bigger adventures, but it doesn't have to be big or small. It's really like, what is your goal? And Mm -hmm. the goal is making memories, having those stories where you laugh Mm -hmm. about Mm -hmm. for years to come, the things that went wrong. Um, Yeah. The times where you forgot toilet paper and somebody has to go to the bathroom. Exactly. Oh yes. All things. I love it. That's the purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's fantastic when your kids do those big adventures and you're so proud and excited Mm -hmm. for them, Mm -hmm. but it, that's not the goal. Really. The goal is all the things that have happened along the way and, um, and the memories that you've made together and the relationship that has been built. Yes, for sure. And yeah, a lot of people listening know that my boys now being ages 23 down to 12, some of the things they love to do are take adventures together without mom and dad. And they plan road trips and adventures. And there's no doubt that all began when they were young and we would take them on smaller adventures and just really focused on that connection. And so I think they've really grown up to value that. And didn't, was, is it your oldest son that got a, is it a certificate? Does he do like rescue? What I remember hearing you on a podcast. Is that right? Yes. Tell us about that. My oldest just became an Eagle Scout last um, Eagle Scout. spring, so and my cool. second is um, also a Boy Scout. And but he's passionate about um, a program he's in called Search and Rescue, okay. and learning um, all about like public safety, mm. firefighting, law enforcement, and how to pursue, you know, serving people in um, those ways. Wow! And um, them being in scouting together. Yeah through the year, through their teen years has, they just did like a 70 mile backpacking trip what? in the Rocky mountains last summer. Wow. And they did it together um, hmm. with their dad and, and some other scouts. I think like that whole process of pushing in, encouraging them mm-hmm. to do um, 
those kind of activities together, Mm -hmm. it's cultivated not just a love of adventure, but a love of relationship Mm -hmm. in the adventure, like what you were saying about your boys Mm -hmm. going on trips. Like they immediately think, well, I want to have my best buds with me to experience this because it's so much about the relationship that you have it is. while you're adventuring. And, yes. And that just makes it so much better. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. And if you ask my 12-year-old now some of his best memories, it, it literally is the mishaps that have happened on their road. I'm like, I'm really glad I didn't know that was happening at that moment when he shares about going hiking in Yosemite and they they their map was on one of their phones and they didn't have cellular service and they had left the paper map at the car. And so he's like, yeah, so at midnight we had to track back, change course. <laughs> then at two, I'm like, you were 11. <laughs> but he just loves that he was a part of such an adventure. And so um, we have that's when we have to kind of recognize that the mishaps can be the best parts. So <laughs> yes, yes, we have a saying in our family, and I put it in my first book. It's it'll make a great story later. There you go. So <laughs> remembering when things go wrong, like in the midst of things, you can say, "Okay, it'll, well, this make a great story later." Totally. And it always goes. yes. And in that moment, often you're like, "I don't care." <laughs> Hey friends, I hope you're enjoying this conversation. I just want to pause here real quick to invite you to do two different things to help support and encourage this podcast and all the things I do. First of all, if you haven't left a rating or review yet for this podcast, that would mean so much to me. It's really easy to do on your phone. You just scroll down right on that podcast app. When you're on the Monica Swanson podcast, scroll down till you see the five stars tap on them. And if you have a moment to leave a few words about what you love most about this podcast, it would mean so much to me. I'm going to read you a quick um, recent review that I love. This is from Courtney Nowacki. I love that last name, Nowacki. She writes, in my quest to raise amazing little boys to become dangerous men for the kingdom of God, Monica Swanson has become a most welcome voice in my life. Once a week, she brings authors onto her podcast, all of whom I've learned a tremendous amount from. Thank you, Monica. She titled it Best Parenting Podcast and gave this podcast five stars. Thank you, Courtney, so much. That means the world to me. All right, guys, so please know that I read every review and they really, really encourage me. Okay. The other thing is now that your books are hopefully arriving, you're starting to read Raising Amazing, just know that the next most helpful thing you can do is to leave an Amazon review. So as soon as you've read enough to feel like you have something to say, or at least five stars to tap, go on over to Amazon to the Raising Amazing book page, simply tap on those five stars or leave a kind review. It would mean so much to me. That is the best way to get word out about Raising Amazing. So thank you for all of your support. You guys are the best. And now let's get back to this conversation with Greta. So you mentioned book. Tell us about both of your books on adventure because I've got one of them in front of me, 100 Days of Adventure, Nature Activities, Creative Projects, and Field Trips for Every Season. It is just beautifully done. I've had so much fun giving it to my 12-year-old and saying, pick out some things we haven't done. Um, Tell us what led to that maybe and about your first book as well. Okay. So my first book is called Adventuring Together, and it's a book for parents, a guide to creating lasting relationships and making memories together. And I wrote it as um, part kind of a memoir of of our stories of adventuring, like I said, every Mm -hmm. week uh, as a family, as a mom and kids, and then also with our our homeschool group, Mm -hmm. Adventure Club. And why I think that adventure is a phenomenal way to create connection. Um, and so it's kind of a equal parts, like how to like practical mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. How do you get out there and do this? And then also like the, the reason why it matters and mm-hmm. why we as parents need to create connection with our kids, especially now, um, yeah. in our world, that's becoming increasingly disconnected mm-hmm. and kids, um, and parents are, just isolated from each other. And I For think sure. when we adventure together, it gets us, it shakes us up, gets us outside of our, our normal routine. Off of screens. And off of screen. <laughs> we adventure in places where there's no cell service. Yay. So, 
you know, on her um, phone, except for taking pictures, which right. I do a lot. Yes. Um, and, and so, yeah, that book just was kind of the story that I wanted to tell and share with parents and say, Hey, you can be a part of this. Totally. You can, you can do this with yes. your kids. Too. And so good, especially for anyone listening that maybe has little kids and doesn't feel like you have an adventurous spirit, don't know where yes. to start. We're going to link to that in show notes for sure. And you mentioned it came out during COVID, right? So yes. that, that yeah. a time when everyone was stuck inside and craving adventure, but not able to. So let's make sure to get our hands on that one. Cause I think that could help a lot of people. And then I guess yeah, that- whether you're starting small, I literally have a chapter called start small, and, you know, mm -hmm. where you're just like, I, I can never imagine, mm -hmm. you know, hiking or camping with my kids. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, you don't have to start there, start where you are yes. and then grow. Yes. Um, and then my second book, the one that you mentioned, a hundred days of adventure came out of, um, a desire to, um, not just have parents invite their kids into connection through adventure, but to have kids mm -hmm. invite their, friends. so I created a book that has a hundred adventures. There's 25 for every season because mm -hmm. 100, um, felt daunting to me, but when I divided it up, yeah. by season up we could do 25 things together yes. in winter and yes. spring. Um, and they're just, it's a way for, it's an activity book. So it's got these activities for kids to do, but instead of it being a book where parents give it to their kids and are like, okay, stay busy. And right. I need some, space. the idea is that a, a child would look at it and say, wow, these look fun. These look amazing. This excites me. Mom, dad, mm -hmm. brother, sister, friend, will you do it with me? Yes. So that's the goal. And um, yeah, whether it's going outside and going into nature or cooking in the kitchen mm -hmm. or looking at art or reading books together, it's yep. just about adventuring and exploring the world and mm -hmm. making connections. I, I love it. And I think we all get stuck in ruts uh, because we do, mm -hmm. you know, have a lot of adventures here, but I love flipping through the book and realizing that there's things that I wouldn't have thought of and some really uh, n new things to me. Uh, is it net, nettle pesto? I didn't know you can make yes. pesto with nettles. So you pick yes. nettles in nature yeah. and you make pesto. That's so cool. It's I mean, really good for you. Too. Okay. It's full of like super awesome antioxidants. And, okay. Um, I'm going to try it. You wouldn't. I'm going to try it. Yeah. No, but just some really neat things. And even if you are inside, if you live where it's snowing and you can't get out, there's there's so many great things in here. And just probably something you haven't thought of, or if you have a twist on how you thought of it, you know, your chalk art. I was like, when I've given my kids chalk, it's just a mess. But to give them some ideas for ways they can use that chalk to make a beautiful masterpiece. And, you know, just a little direction sometimes can make all the difference. So I love these. The winter one was hard for me to write because I was like, um, I don't live where there's snow. Right. Yeah. No, uh -huh. as many winter adventures I need. So I had to pull friends who lived in other did. places. This, re could you really do this? Is this sure. feasible? Absolutely. No, they're all good. And it's really, I love the illustrations. It's just so pretty. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. It was fun to write. It really was. I love writing for kids. I bet. Well, one thing that I have said in my book, Boy Mom, that one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about adventure, why I think it's so important, and, and research actually backs this up, that if we don't give our kids enough healthy adventure, then they're likely to go looking for adventure in some unhealthy places, in some dangerous places, right? So when we think about some of the things that kids are drawn to, video games, at least video game addiction, um, pornography, experimenting with drugs and alcohol, all these things are really ways that kids are seeking some form of adventure, right? It's not yes. a good adventure, but it's they're, they're obviously seeking a thrill. I mean, we, we all do. And we remember when we were kids just wanting to experience something unknown and new. And so one of my motivations is I want to keep my boys adventuring so that they have their buckets full. They're like so tired at the end of the day that they don't need to go searching online for some other kind of adventure. And I know that that's something you share a heart for. Uh, so yeah. talk to us a little bit about that and some of the things you talk about online as well. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because it is so true and it is so important for kids mm -hmm. now in our mm -hmm. in their generation, our time yep. more, I think, than ever before, yep. mm -hmm. because 
we are seeking the things that fill us up yeah. and bring excitement and make us feel like we've done something special and yep. unique and important. Mm-hmm. If we don't provide our kids with the opportunities yeah. to do those things, if we don't provide a healthy place, just like you said, yep. they're going to seek in unhealthy ways. Mm-hmm. And um, especially because those unhealthy ways are so easy. There's really, really much easier for them to access than than the adventure, like going mm-hmm. surfing or diving yep. or cycling mm-hmm. or whatever you want to do. Uh, they can just hop online and they oh, can be so in easy. a cool um, playing a video game where they feel like mm-hmm. it feels like an adventure. It feels like they're doing something. They just conquered you know, a kingdom. They built something great. They shot a bad guy. Yeah. Right. Um, they get that dopamine hit from mm. watching pornography. Right, that makes them for a moment feel good, mm. and it does, but it's not lasting. Mm. And then it brings afterwards mm. so many things that um, are the antithesis yeah. of the good yeah. that should come from a yeah. dopamine hit, right? Yep. And so, I think if if we really want to give our kids um, the ability to experience real life adventure, real life connection real intimacy, real joy. Mm. Um, we have to help them say no to pornography, say no to video game addiction, say no to alcohol and drugs, but we can't just say, don't do those things. Mm -hmm. Those are bad. We have to provide a place. Mm -hmm. We have to put in time and effort to show them what the alternatives are. Yes. Right. We have to even be willing to let them have those like dangerous moments uh-huh. of being lost on the trail totally. in Yosemite or yeah. like my son, one of my sons, he's really into cycling now and he wants to cycle farther and farther from home. And we live in a place where there's tons of traffic uh. and it, it's scary, but I also know he is responsible. Mm-hmm. He's wise yeah. and he is a teacher. Yeah. He's longing for this. So if I don't allow him to have those moments, mm-hmm. he's going to seek mm-hmm. for that same thing feeling of thrill and adventure and excitement, he's going to seek them in other yep. places. Yes. So I have to say yes to um, something that feels a little dangerous mm-hmm. in order, I think, to save him from things that are far more dangerous. One of the hardest parts about this is it, it takes more effort. It's a lot easier to hand yes. your kid a screen and for you, mom, to check out, and we're all tired. I get it. I've done it. I'm guilty as anyone, but to say, okay, Same. I'll drive you to the trail. Okay, I'll pack my stuff. Okay, yeah. I'll put my screen aside. Um, and it takes a lot more effort on our part. And so we can come up with all the excuses in the world, but usually it comes down to our own convenience. I know I'm busted on that one. It does take effort. It 100% does. And I would never say it's the easier choice, no. um, but it's the better choice. I mean, I think back to when we had three little kids and we were getting a minivan and we purposely asked to find our, we were looking for rather a minivan that didn't have a video screen yeah. in it. Cause I find. knew, I knew myself uh-huh. that it would just at the end of a road trip or even just a oh, drive yeah. to the grocery store, it would be so much easier to pop in a movie wow, for, for my you. kids. Easier for them, but for me, mm-hmm. and in, and I knew if it was there, then I would just mm-hmm. default to it. Yeah. It's easier. And yeah. We're tired and we want a break. Yes. Um, but we, we opted not to do that. And because of that, we um, listened to a lot of books and we've had a lot of great conversations yes. and my yes. kids know how to stare out the window and draw mm-hmm. while we read. Mm-hmm. And those are valuable skills, but um, sometimes I was like, dang, I wish we had. Totally. Totally. Yes. You know, my- yes. I think it's Andy Crouch that says car time is talk time. That's always my little motto in the car. <laughs> um, but yeah, we love adventures in Odyssey. I don't know if you're if you've listened to yes. us. Yes. Yes. They're great. My yeah. big boys all grew up on them. And now my 12 year old is finally starting to like them more. So that's been our thing. And it's been so much fun, but I agree with you that, uh, it, it's when it's there, it's so convenient. So sometimes we need to set boundaries for ourselves, I think as much as yeah. anything. And, and there's grace. I mean, there's, there, 
there's sure. always exceptions, but um, I think when you set yourself up for success that way and have some little, um, Justin Whitmill early talks a lot about rhythms and routines. And like by not having that screen in the car, your rhythm in that car is that you talk or yeah. you listen to a book. So I love that. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, there's so much you and I could talk about, and I, I'd love to have you back to honestly just talk more homeschooling. Okay. Um, and then I'd love to Do talk it. more about protecting kids from pornography, because I know that's something you talk about a lot, and that's such a passion of mine as well. Yes. So ooh, there's a lot. <laughs> More. There's more. In store. Yes. Okay. But before we wrap up here, um, I do love to ask my guests if you can share something from your life uh, lately um, that you would call amazing, something that has been a pleasant surprise or caused wonder. Yeah. Um, I thought about this and um, I would say I recently learned the story of um, a missionary. His name is George Mueller. Mm -hmm. And I had heard his name before. I didn't really know his story. And my youngest son loves to listen to missionary biographies. Mm. He's passionate about them. And so I listened to them with him. And we listened to the story of George Mueller, who was a missionary and ran an orphanage. And he was a man who spent his life praying mm. with the kind of prayer life that crazy prayer. I life. can't honestly <laughs> can't even imagine. Yeah. And um I was so inspired by his story that now I want to find um more books and yes. and read more about now he's this the one life. that would not tell anyone his needs, right? right? But he would pray yes. them and God right. met them like crazy on yeah. point every time. And, thousands of orphans, um, in miraculous ways by just praying every day. Sometimes it would be like, we don't have any food for the day. How are we going to feed 400 kids? Yeah. And somebody would say, knock at the door. And they had, you know, cartons of milk because mm. they, the cart broke down right yep. outside of the door. Of the Is orphanage. that wild? Oh. So it's been amazing to, oh. to learn more about totally man and to be inspired by his story and his prayer life. And um, oh, it came from reading a book with my son. Yay. Oh, that is amazing. Would you send me um, maybe a link to the, if there's like a series of those audiobooks that I could share in show yeah. notes? You got it. Awesome. It's, it's a fantastic series. We're working our way through it. So oh. I will say, I will give you the link you can put it in the show notes. It's yeah. called Christian Hero and Now. Okay, They're good, good. Best. Yeah, we have some of the paperback, but we haven't done any of those on audio. So that's so yeah, they're good. great on audio. I have a dyslexic kid who reading um, the books on his own is really hard. So listening to him mm. on audio is a oh. way for him to read great books um, when he would otherwise be really struggling sure. and would detract from his, okay. his joy. Well, so. we're going to link to that then in the show notes as well as to your books and your website. Where, If someone just wants to hop on and follow you right now, where can they find you? Yeah. So you can find me. I'm most active on Instagram. My handle there is ma and pa modern, <laughs> but you could just look up Greta Eskridge and you'd find me as well. And um, if you want to read some of the articles I've written about adventuring or protecting kids from pornography, you could check out my website, Greta Eskridge.com. And there's lots of stuff there too. Mm. So those are the best places to to find me. So good. I love it. We'll link to all those places. And I just hope to have you back. I could talk to you all day long, I think. So until we meet in person, let's yep. get back online and, and have another chat. But thank you so much, Greta, for your time. And I'm so inspired and encouraged by everything you share. Thanks. It's been a joy to talk to you. And I can't wait for part two. <laughs> <laughs> good. Me too. All right. Take care. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I certainly did. And of course, you can find links to everything we talked about and where you can follow Greta over in show notes, which today are found at monicaswanson.com forward slash Greta dash Eskridge. And that's G-R-E-T-A dash E-S-K-R-I-D-G-E. So thanks for being here. We've got a great lineup this spring. So many more awesome guests. And at the end of the month, I'm going to start walking through chapters of Raising Amazing. So kind of like a year long book club. So be sure to get your copy. There's a link to that as well over in show notes. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And until next time, aloha. Aloha.